right, so today we are recording from a hotel in, um, in Malaysia. I've been here for a few days holding some lectures and workshops. And so uh, I got a question about uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, I posted a question of what I should make these tutorials about. And one of the questions that I got was how to actually start out with the data-driven uh, marketing. So I'm going to do that one first before we actually uh, get into uh, how to mount these messages on uh, social media and how to reach our nines and the reason for that being that Facebook is pushing a new system currently and uh, I just want to make sure that it pushes through before I make the, the tutorial so today is about how to start out with data-driven marketing Right, so the first thing I would do if I was just starting out using data, especially for marketing purposes, the first thing I would do is I would uh, connect to the Google Analytics demo account. So if you search for Google Analytics demo account, you will actually be able to access the demo account that Google have set up for their demo store where they sell their own merchandise. This is a complete setup of Google Analytics and you will be able to then follow everything here. Uh, the one thing or the, the, there are a few things I would like you to pay attention to more than others, especially in terms of acquisition and you have uh, uh, all traffic and you have referrals. What I want you to do here is to have a look at the different referrals that you're actually getting, have a look at the different conversion rates, you have a look at different types of goals and you consider how you're going to set that up in, uh, in your own website. Cause uh, if you look at referrals, that's where you can really find the treasures when you start working. Because uh, you will find the people who will be sending you the most profitable traffic. And uh, those guys uh, are invaluable when you start working. But So the referral report is one of my favorites. Also down in multi-channel funnels here, we got top conversion paths. Uh, where you can have a look at, if you click source medium here. You can have a look at exactly when in a click chain uh, a specific user visits your website and when they, when they uh, like if they come in through Google here and then secondly direct, you will be able to see a lot of these different click chains and you will be able to determine which like uh, companies are what which publishers are good for branding and which publishers are good for last click. Uh, and the logic follows if you're early in this click chain you're very good for branding because people find you there and if they're very late in this click chain well naturally then then they are uh, good for uh, for sales so i would recommend you to browse down this uh, report also very good when you're just starting out also what is important when you're starting out is to sort of just you know ask yourself a question like uh, what do my users like? What do, uh, what kind of products do they like to buy? Uh, where do they go before they buy something? Those kind of questions are super essential in order to understand the user and their psychology. So, those are the kind of questions I would ask the Google Analytics when I started out. Because if you don't have the Analytics Foundation, you have nothing. When you get bored of that, which will take you about, you know, whatever time, uh, depending upon what type of personality you are you move on and then there are sites such as growthhackers.com where you can find really neat hacks but before you go to these sites then you gotta set a problem like what's my goal what challenges do I face then you go to this website you start searching for different kind of, of solutions like LinkedIn <coughs> here you search for LinkedIn you got like thousands of posts that will help you out yeah about 2,000 articles here that deal with different kind of problems concerning LinkedIn. It's just to dig in and you will find something that will take you to the next level. But that won't happen unless you understand your own users and the way to practice doing that is by visiting the demo store from Google. The next thing you do once you start coming up with your own solutions here is to actually visit a site called Quora. Here you look up uh, the kind of questions that you could actually answer to test yourself whether or not you are explaining these things in a good way or not. So uh, 
Quora is a perfect site for this. LinkedIn Groups is also a good place for this. This is where you test whether or not your ideas have any weight or not, especially if you're going to sell yourself as a consultant. So that's the next step that I would do. Once you get comfortable doing that, and especially once you get comfortable uh, working with um, uh, people who criticize you, that's when I would start uh, turning to a project of my own. For my sake, this was my book and my video courses. Uh, the good thing about setting a project alive is that you understand all the steps it takes to actually launch something online. And, you know, you just go with best practice from the get-go. You notice that that doesn't work, and then you come up with your own ideas. And you implement Google Analytics, Hotjar, all of those tools that will actually teach you something uh, along the way. And eventually you get to know your, your, uh, your audience. Uh, but when, you, when you're done with that, usually what happens is you, you get bored. Uh, so there is always good to have a side project uh, to learn and in my case that side project is Amazon so once you've gone through understanding Google Analytics you've read up on growthhackers.com uh, you've answered questions and been criticized on Quora and then you move on to your own project once you get bored of that I think Amazon is a great place to turn to because you can find anything here from what is popular in your market right now, what kind of products are people using, what colors are they using, how are they expressing themselves in the review section and things like that. This even works if you work with like vendors that don't sell a thing, if you work with PR or whatever you do, uh, you know, it's, it's great to just collect a lot of data from here. Uh, because it's it's surely the pulse of whatever society you're in and you got to understand the people here in order to understand how you should express yourself regardless of what you're doing so that's the next step the last and final step that you should probably undertake is to try to to uh, get published somewhere so now you take whatever your project was you combine that with the knowledge and insights you get of trends you map them two together and you create a solid pitch that you can pitch to a media house such as Mashable or wherever, like aim high, you know. And if you got the pulse and you got the, the content, then Mashable will sure be able to pick it up if you manage to target them. But we saw how that worked out, like we saw how to do that in a previous video. So those are my, my tips on how to actually start out and I hope they were helpful because if you go through Google Analytics, start reading up on what other people have done, start answering questions yourself, <coughs> start your own project and then get on to, to, to uh, trying to combine that with the pulse of society right now then you will be in a good spot to earn some well-deserved uh, publicity. And yeah, you should do that. Go ahead. All right, I hope you like the sound because I'm using this in order to record it. And uh, yeah, if you like this video, you do as you're used to. Hit the like button or if you want to share it with someone who's just starting out using data for marketing, then yeah, just share it in an email. Do not post it to Facebook as usual, uh, but show that you care about someone and send it privately. That's the way that you earn from sharing something. So yeah, uh, do that and uh, see you in the next episode. Cheers! So this is what happens when you vlog publicly. Isn't that, isn't that right? <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you.